again, we've plugged in the second observation of the transformed x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, did the arithmetic and got 40.76. The second square deviation between the observed value y and its sample mean is found by taking 38.47, subtracting 50.23, and squaring, which yields 138.45. The second residual squared was 5.24. The second squared deviation between the predicted value of y and its mean is 89.82. The rest of them are shown in the table. When we sum this column, we get the total sum of squares. This is the numerator of the variance in y. When we sum this column, remember, each one of these is a squared estimated error. So this sum is a sum of squared estimated errors, SSE. The total of this column is the SSR. Now remember, this is the Excel output of the regression, multiple regression analysis. And notice that the sum of squares due to regression is 4,018. The sum of squares due to error is 3,746.689. The total sum of squares is 7,764. The adjusted R square is 0.486. So 49% of the variability in the employment population ratio of low-income single mothers can be explained by the model. The degrees of freedom for the total sum of squares is 99. The total sum of squares is the sum of the sum of squares due to regression and sum of squares due to error. The mean square due to regression is the ratio of the sum of squares due to regression divided by its degrees of freedom. Remember, we have six variables, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the degrees of freedom for sum of squares due to regression is six. The mean square due to error is found by taking the sum of squares due to error divided by its degrees of freedom, which is 93. The F stat is found by dividing the mean square due to regression by the mean square due to error. The null hypothesis is that all slope coefficients are simultaneously equal to zero. Because F statistics are ratios of estimates of variance, and variances are always positive, the F distribution is over all positive values. So this goes from zero to infinity. The mean of an F statistic is approximately equal to one if the null hypothesis is true. The degrees of freedom for the numerator of the F statistic was six because we had six independent variables. The degrees of freedom of the denominator was equal to 93 because the sum of squares due to error is in the denominator of the F statistic and the sum of squares due to error had a degrees of freedom equal to 93. The F critical value is found in column six and row corresponding to 93 degrees of freedom and a significance level of 0.05. Hence, the critical value is 2.20. This value is in the table. Again, it's in the intersection of this column and this row in the F distribution table. The critical value defines the reject the null region and the do not reject the null region. Since the F statistic is larger than the critical value, the F statistic is in the reject the null region, meaning there's at least one slope coefficient not equal to zero. In other words, the model appears to be significant. Next, we test each slope coefficient individually. The first null hypothesis is that B1 equals zero. With a significance level of 0.05, we divide the alpha by two because this is a two-tailed test. So alpha divided by two is 0.025. The degrees of freedom equals 93. The upper T critical value is found in column 0.025 and row 93 of the T distribution table. We use the property of symmetry to give us the lower T critical value. The T stat, recall, was the ratio of the estimated slope coefficient and its standard error, which is, in this case, negative 2.32. Negative 2.32 is in the lower tail, hence we reject the null at a 5% level of significance, meaning T 
antenna payments influence the decision to work. The second test involves the second slope coefficient. So the second individual t-test has a null hypothesis of beta 2 equal to 0. Alpha, alpha divided by 2, the degrees of freedom, the critical values all remain the same. All that changes is the t-stat. And the t-stat is the ratio of the estimated slope and its standard error. For the second variable, the t-stat is negative 1.39, which is in the do not reject region. Hence, we cannot reject the null at a 5% level of significance for variable x2. Wealth reform in general does not influence the decision to work. The third t-test has a null hypothesis of beta 3 equal to 0. Again, the alpha level, alpha divided by 2, the degrees of freedom, the t critical values all remain the same. The only difference is the value of the t-stat. The t-stat for the third variable is b3 divided by its standard error, which is 3.768 divided by 1.927, which is equal to 1.96. Now 1.96 is really close to the upper t critical value of 1.986. Although we cannot reject it at the 5% level of significance, we can reject it at the 10% level because its p-value was equal to 0.054. Hence, the full sanction policy is not highly significant, but it is significant, meaning full sanctions for failure to comply with work rules also influence the decision to work. The fourth individual t-test has an hypothesis of beta 4 equal to 0. Alpha, alpha divided by 2, and the degrees of freedom are the same. For that reason, the t-critical values do not change. The t-stat for the fourth coefficient is the estimated coefficient for variable x4 divided by its standard error which is the ratio of negative 0.291 and 0.089, which is negative 3.26, which puts it in the lower part of the distribution. Hence, we reject the null hypothesis at a 5% level of significance, meaning the share of the population that is black influences the employment population ratio. The fifth individual t-test has a null hypothesis of beta 5 equal to 0. The t-stat equals negative 1.85. Although this is in the do not reject region, negative 1.85 is really close to the lower critical value of negative 1.986. So although we can't reject the null at the 5% level of significance, we can reject it at the 10% level because the p-value was equal to 0 0.068. The X5, the share of the population that has a high school dropout, is significant at the 10% level. So we would conclude the share of the population that has a high school dropout influences the decision to work. The sixth and final individual t-test has a null hypothesis of beta 6 equal to 0. The t-stat equals B6, the estimated slope coefficient, divided by the standard error of B6 which is negative 4.89. Again, this is in the lower tail of the distribution. Hence, we reject the null hypothesis at the 5% level of significance. What this means is the unemployment rate influences the decision to work. Now for the fun part, the interpretation of the results. Since the estimated coefficient B1 is statistically significant, we interpret its value as follows. The difference in the predicted value of y, the employment population ratio of low-income single mothers, is equal to negative 5.709, which is b1, times the natural log of 1.10, which equals a negative 0.54. What this means is increasing monthly benefit levels for a family of 3 by 10% will result in a 0.5 percentage point reduction in the average employment population ratio of low-income single mothers. This is how you interpret coefficients 
when the x variable has been logged. Since the estimated coefficient b2 is statistically insignificant at levels greater than 15%, we interpret its value as follows. Welfare reform in general had no effect on the employment population ratio of low-income single mothers. Since the estimated coefficient b3 is statistically significant at the 10% level, we interpret its value as follows. Remember, x3 is the full sanction policy. It either has a value of 0 or it has a value of 1. So we're, here we're interpreting the slope of a dummy variable, and it's kind of tricky. b3 is equal to 3.768, which is the estimate of beta 3. Now, x3, when x3 is 0, a state does not have the full sanction policy in place. When x3 is 1, it has the full sanction policy in place. So when x3 goes from 0 to 1, it's adopting the full sanction policy. And when it does this, the employment population ratio rises by 3.768 percentage points. Hence, the employment population ratio of low-income single mothers is 3.768 percentage points higher in states that adopted full sanctions for families that fail to comply with work rules. This is perfectly in line with what we came up with in our theory. Since estimated coefficient B4 is statistically significant at the 5% level, we interpret its value as follows. B4 is the change in Y over the change in X4. B4 equaled negative 0.291. We can rewrite negative 2.91 as negative 0.291 divided by plus 1. We still have negative 0.291 when we plug that in the calculator. Multiplying that fraction by 10 over 10 does not change the value of this expression because if I plug all this into a calculator, I get this number. Doing this makes it easier to interpret coefficient B4. Simplification yields negative 2.91 divided by a plus 10. Again, if I plug that expression or that fraction into a calculator, I get negative 0.291. Hence, each 10 percentage point increase in the share of the black population is associated with a 2.91 percentage point decline in the employment population ratio of low-income single mothers. Since estimated coefficient B5 is statistically significant at the 5% level, we interpret its value as follows. B5 again is a change in the employment population ratio over the change in variable x5. B5 was found to be equal to negative 0.374. We write that as negative 0.374 divided by plus 1 times 10 over 10. Uh, multiplying, the, multiplying the numerators together gives us negative 3.74. Multiplying the denominators together we get plus 10. Again, negative 3.74 divided by 10 is negative 0.374. Doing this just makes it easier to interpret. So what this says is, or what this implies is, each 10 percentage point increase in the high school dropout rate, which is x5, is associated with a 3.74 percentage point decline in the employment population ratio of low-income single mothers. Since estimated coefficient b6 is statistically significant at the 5% level, we interpret its value as follows. B6 is the change in Y over the change in X6, which we found to be equal to negative 3.023. Putting it over plus 1 makes it easier to interpret this coefficient. Now, we don't multiply it by 10 over 10, because remember, X6 is the unemployment rate. And the unemployment rate in America, you know, it's not going to jump by 10 percentage points. It'll jump by maybe 1 percentage point. So each one percentage point increase in the unemployment rate is associated with a 3.023 percentage point decline in the employment population ratio of low-income single mothers. Complete homework 15 that is posted on Blackboard.